Um, yeah, my, co- uh, my colleague Henry Yin and I, we both work at NASA, NASA Science Research Center and um, we've, uh, we've uh, played with uh, using the OpenMP 4.5 dual cross support for our, well, guess what? NAS Parallel Benchmark. That's what we do at NAS, NAS Parallel Benchmarks. So Henry has developed six different implementations of one of the benchmark kernels and um, so he's the mastermind behind all these um, implementations and he's also our expert on OpenMP. Um, uh, I myself uh, do m- much more mundane tasks. I work in the scientific consulting group um, uh, dealing with like mostly very mundane um, user questions. Uh, our users are very, very conservative, use only very, very basic uh, features of OpenMP. So when I listen to the presentations this morning, um, I, I, I am just in awe of all these new features that you guys are using and I certainly right now I feel like the caveman of, of OpenMP, like caveman's approach to view of OpenMP. The outline of the presentation is uh, as follows. Oh yeah, I should also add, Henry will be, uh, Henry could not come right now, but he will be available uh, next week at the face-to-face. So for those of you who stay around for the face-to-face, you'll have the opportunity to talk to him directly. The outline of the talk is as follows. I give like a very brief background on the, on the OpenMP dual course um, con- concept. Um, I explain Henry's implementations of the LU benchmark to you and um, then I'll talk a little bit about performance analysis which is like the small part that that I've done and um, then come up with like some preliminary summary and and conclusions. Uh, I I, I wrote here time permitting I'd also like to discuss a, a relatively new benchmark kernel the parallel research kernel sync point to point uh, that's very similar to the LU OpenMP yet just different enough to have completely different conclusions. But but I, I don't think there's a fair chance that, that I'll even get there. Uh, so okay, background, I don't need to do much about this since you all have the background. Uh, you all probably know then that with OpenMP 4.0 we have the ordered clause to the work share construct and then an ordered construct for that you can place within the body of such an ordered work shared loop and uh, with this body you specify a, a, a code region uh, with, with this construct you specify a code region in the loop body that will be then uh, executed in lexical order which means in the, in the ordered iterations uh, in the order of the iterations and so, so basically in layman's term it will sequentialize the, 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 the execution of this uh, of this region and admit it, you have to admit the expressive, expressiveness of this is not not very extensive, right? It's not very expressive. You cannot specify any details about the dependence itself, like such as distance vectors or you know other things. So, so relief to this came with OpenMP 4.4 by introducing the depend clause for this ordered construct and um, the depend clause takes arguments, sync and source and with these uh, arguments you can specify, you can basically fine tune the dependence information and then, yeah, um, yeah, yep. Yep, yep, that's, that's what you can do. You can fine tune uh, information about dependencies and this whole thing is referred to this like whole combo of this uh, ordered construct with the depend clause and its arguments that's referred to as the dual cross concept. Um, 
The, um, uh, is a little code snippet here which for all of you who avidly study the OpenMP uh, examples document it will look familiar, it's shamelessly stolen from there so um, that, that just shows how this uh, feature is being used so you place the ordered construct on the loop to um, because there is a dependence in there to evaluate B, you need the value of B of I minus 1 and then you basically uh, introduce uh, by, by using the, the depend cl clause with the sync uh, argument you specify a wait point, you have to wait for the previous iteration to be finished and then here you signal to the other thread uh, other threads who may depend on this iteration that the work's done, the data is available, can be consumed. Right? So, and why uh, situations where this is um, hopefully, uh, where one hopes that this is useful for uh, hyperplane algorithms or pipeline thread algorithms. Examples for this is what's heavily used at, at NASA Ames, like the CFD code overflow, which has a silver, like a successive Gaussian, Gauss style um, flow um, time. Uh, 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 line sweeper in one of the implicit time solver um, steps, and um, yeah, they, they have to they have to rearrange the order of of, of iterations in strange and unusual ways uh, to be able to extract a certain amount of parallelism, uh, which is depicted so so either a hyperplane or a, a pipeline method, and these little beautiful two little charts. Um, um, sort of graphically display that. Um, now the, the LU, um, um, the, the LU benchmark kernel that, that we'll be discussing here that tries to, not tries to, it does capture the characteristics of this overflow code for this, for this implicit time solver step. And uh, so you see that um, uh, yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's a successive over relaxation method and it's, I, I guess we don't have, oh, yeah, I have my own mouse. Um, uh, and, it's, uh, and the method is factorized into a lower and an upper silver step, but both of them carry dependencies in each of the spatial dimensions that it walks through, okay? So there is no chance you could just easily uh, pick one dimension and vectorize that, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, parallelize that with OpenMP. So, now, but people have not given up to extract a certain amount on, of parallelism by using a thread pipelining method. <gasps> There's no text on the slide. No, it's, it's animated. It's animated. So how do you set up a thread pipeline? You place a parallel construct on the outermost loop. You place the work share on the next inner loop. But then you need to synchronize uh, um, before the iteration, uh, b before the execution of this inner loop. You need to synchronize that the left and right, uh, to, uh, that the left data is available and then also tell the other threads when the right, uh, the, the other threads on the right side that now the data is ready for consumption. And I've been, we've both decided we do not want to show the code. So, so this this before the before there was the OpenMP do across support that was done manually by by explicitly programming such synchronization routines and they rely on testing shared variables and they use the OpenMP flush um, semantics in order to try to ensure memory consistency. I will not show the code because that would derail the presentation right, right from here. Because, so um, the, 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 I, I will only summarize it um, that the implementing that is a time consuming, um, it's error prone as we know from years of expertise because there had actually been a bug in there for many years that has, that has now been 
fixed hopefully but it's, it's very error prone and also if you look at it it's like completely non-intuitive you will, we could discuss that for, for an hour you know, and until, until we are all on the same page so let me just, just take my word for it um, that this is what it is but um, cut the long story short what you get with these synchronizations is this like pipelined um, um, the pipeline execution of the threads and yeah and um, not that it matters but I just wanted to show what we cannot do in OpenMP which is what I can do in MPI which is like a two-dimensional distribution of the work and have the hyperplane sort of going in, a, uh, in, in two dimensions versus this here only goes in one dimension not that it matters, but uh, at, at least I don't know how to do it with OpenMP. Not sure if it would be possible using the collapse clause, but I don't know how to distribute the work um, across the threads. And um, okay, now the same, what I've just explained to you, the same can be done using the dual cross support that's now available. And for the dual cross support, and that's, that's shown here, we see the two code snippets side by side. Um, so, so on the left side, that's the manual implementation, and you see that it calls these routines, these like ugly red routines, and cleft and sync right, that we do not want to show. Whereas with the dual cross support, you can now put your parallel on the outer loop, just like with the manual version, but then you can place this ordered construct with my mouse. Well, never mind. You, you see it. You place the ordered construct with an argument of one, indicating that the loop nest stretches across one dimension. You place this on a J loop, and then within the loop body, you use your depend clause, you use your ordered with the depend clause and the sync. Uh, uh, the sync argument specifying the weight point for j minus 1 being available and, and you place your source at the end of this loop body. Um, well, uh, any questions on that? Yes? One is, excuse me, Ha, we'll, mm, no, I, we, we, we get to that, we get to that. I actually do have a, do, do have a slide on that. I'm glad you asked the question. So, uh, oh, actually, I, I think I explain it a little bit right now. So what that does, so, so it's actually not coarser grain. So you can think of that as synchronized, as calling the routine sync left. Okay? Because this will be, this will be executed sequentially and then um, this will be executed in an ordered way until this dependence is satisfied. And the same, that's the same that this routine sync left does, which I, I don't have the, the implementation here right now. And, and I have a proof for this. I have a proof for this because, I mean, 100% we don't really know what's going on here, right? A compiler does that now for us. So, so rather than using our hand cobbled together uh, implementation, we now leave that to, to, to the compiler and we can, you know, um, then blame the compiler if it doesn't do the correct thing. So, wash our hands. Um, uh, that, I'm surprised another question doesn't come up, which is, yeah, I, I, I'm actually surprised many things don't come up, but one question I can actually um, answer, where is I in this whole picture? I, you've heard me blathering about a triply nested loop, right, with, with dependencies in each dimension. Well, I is hidden in the routines, so that's why I've outlined a little bit the nice fat body of this 
the slooping. Uh, and uh, I, I forgot to mention that's the lower sober step. Doesn't matter. The upper sober step is the same thing. Yeah. But uh, the eye loop here is hidden in these routines. So we don't worry about the eye loop here. What's important is that, um, that the routine JACLD, so, so both of them have an eye loop in there, but the, the, the JACLD routine has no dependencies. So that could be, could be vectorized. And the Intel compiler actually does that. But it's, I'm just saying that, that there is an optimization, you know, compiler optimization opportunity here. Uh, the BLTS is the troublemaker. So the, the JAC, JACLD doesn't do anything more than just calculating a one-dimensional Jacobian vector, uh, a set of Jacobians, and uh, the routine BLTS wants to update a three-dimensional residual vector and it uses this Jacobian, these Jacobian matrices and uh, it, it also uses residuals from two previous planes from J minus one and K minus one. So that's, that's the guy who introduces the dependencies. And it's also not vectorizable. Even though the, the Intel compiler vectorizes something somehow, uh, not not that matters. I don't know. It probably can. Yeah. But 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 in general, the vectorization doesn't help here. Um, okay. Questions to the questions to the hyper. Uh, excuse me. So qu questions for for this method in general. I think it's 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 pretty clear. Also, I'll come back to it. So now let's move on to the hyperplane method. Um, uh, the, the hyperplane method, Henry calls that two-dimensional, even though it's the one-dimensional hyperplane that you saw depicted in this in this previous um, chart. Uh, but you'll see. So, so why does he call it two-dimensional, or why I think he calls it two-dimensional? So, what is what is a hyperplane method? What is a hyperplane? Um, you there in a green shirt. <laughs> no, hyperplane. <laughs> a, a, a hyperplane is defined by the, all the set of points where the indices J and K add up to, to L. So that's the hyperplane L. And the hyperplane method relies on the fact that all the points within a hyperplane, they can actually be calculated independently of each other. So you can, you can paralyze this loop. So, so what he did is, is, in order to do the hyperplane version, you need to transfer the loop over JK into a loop over the L, and I call that JK. It's a, a, a loop over the hyperplanes and then all the points within the hyperplane. Okay, and then you get something that, that looks like, that, that looks like the code snippet below. And, um, no manual synchronization is necessary here because, as I said, the points within the hyperplane can all be done in parallel. Um, however, however, no, no explicit thread synchronization, okay? However, all the hyperplanes have to be done sequentially, step by step by step. So therefore, you know, you have your implicit, you have your implicit barrier synchronization um, at the end of this of this JK loop. Okay. I'm actually no I'm actually surprised with all your experts. I'm surprised that no I shouldn't go there. That nobody was complaining for about the pipeline version. Did you see the no weight that was there? You saw the no weight and if you don't have the no weight there the single hang. Now where in the standard does it say standard experts. Where in the standard does it say that the no weight um, shall actually enforce a no weight? I think I think it's ambiguous. I think the the, the compiler does not can ignore the no no weight. Yeah, yeah it, it it can. I at least I don't see at least I don't see where it says it then shall not wait. It could, 
it could uh, choose to to wait. And I've, I've verified that if I take the no weight out, uh, the method will hang. So I, I don't know if this is intentional. That would actually be one of the things I'm, I'm interested in is this intention that it can be ignored. Does that have any benefits? I think it's very shocking for the user if you put the no weight there and then, then it waits. Would would be shocking for our benchmark. Hmm? On the, the depends can be ignored. Now that would be bad. Okay. Well, that, you can ignore no, yeah. Sorry. The depends can be sequentially. Yeah. Uh, it sequentially is okay, but if if you, yeah, right. if you just assume there are no dependents, well, you still have to order it, right? Uh, Well, it does not. It does uh, at the moment. It doesn't do anything. It can be completely ignored. Yeah, unless, but it doesn't say. But that's the wrong logic, right? That doesn't mean if the if it's um, if it is specified, it has to be. It it doesn't mean that like the you know that like the the inverse. If I'm not a native speaker, but it, it sounds like you know, you get a barrier on the left to say no way, in which case you don't get that. Is that true? I also understand that. Yeah, I mean, one would understand it, but is that really true? That that just means that if the no weight is there, you can not, you can, you can expect a barrier. It doesn't tell you anything, but, uh, okay, I mean, that's not really the subject of my talk. It doesn't say if it's there, what you can expect, right? Or does it? <laughs> I would make the standard less ambiguous. But that's, that's just me. So anyhow, here's an implicit barrier, and, and that's non-ambiguous. You can expect that, no, no barrier. Uh, uh, so, 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 so what are, what are the, so, so the thing is, here we, we had to among with the indices quite significantly. Okay, I mean it looks so easy, but again, you know, transforming these indices, there is some, yeah. Now look how nice and easy, now look and uh, nice and easy that can be implemented with the dual cross support. All we need to do is that now we span the nesting, uh, we, we, we span the dependencies across two loops. So we have, we have like an audit with, uh, with a two, and then we, we, we use the sync for k minus one and j minus one. Nice. I, I, I think it's nicer, cleaner, um, and you know, requires less manual munging. You, you preserve the, the original structure of the loop. No, no rewrite. That's what OpenMP is for, so that's, that's good. Um, so only specify dependencies. You don't really, so, so we call that, we call that the two-dimensional uh, the hyperplane, I think the, the name comes from because you have basically two indices involved in, in a manual version as well as in a dual cross version. So it's not really that the, that the hyperplane goes through two dimensions, it's, you know, two, two indices are involved. Um, now does this uh, with, with dual cross, um, is that really hyperplane? You know, in the in the way that we've seen it in the picture, we don't know. I still don't know. But I show you some perform. You know, I, I show you some assumptions about this. I mean, for for the manual implementation, we know what's going on, right? We we we, we reorder the indices, and uh, he, he, here. Here we only we only specify the dependencies, you know, and how the compiler then you know deals with walking through these um, to to the grid um, space to the through the iteration space. We don't know. At least I don't know. Is it obvious? I I don't know. Uh, another uh, now the compiler is specified going through the iteration. Hmm. The spec says that it has to be in the order of 
Yeah, so is that, is that really a hyperplane? I don't know, I can't really envision. Yeah. I'll assume that the code is correct. I assume so too. We haven't had a failure yet. <laughs> and I, I can tell you, I've run it multiple, multiple times. It's just not clear to me that this is really, you know, in a hyperplane. But, but I mean, it definitely, I, I show some more about it later on. Okay. Uh, 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 an important difference here to notice, and I come back about, um, to this uh, also, is that, that we are using the static one uh, for the best uh, load balancing, for the best performance. And I show you what happens if you use static. Bad things happen. And now, just when you thought we've heard all we want about how to restructure LU, here's one more. Here's one more, the 3D hyperplane version. Once you start restructuring this thing, you just can't stop. So here is, a, I, I can't talk about details. So you can cross, uh, use, you, you can just make a natural extension of this two-dimensional uh, implementation by, by now getting all three indices into the equation. Okay, but for this, we have to, we need three indices. We have to hoist this index i, which was so useful for vectorization for the JACLD routine. We have to hoist that out of the loop. So there is some, some rewriting um, required. And then, and then again, what he does is, well, what, what I described here. Uh, I, I, I can't go into details. So, so you, 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 um, do a, so you lift this I out, you pre-compute the number of, in all of the hyperplanes, you loop through the hyperplanes and the, and the points within the hyperplane, and you com convert this pair into indices uh, L and N into indices I and J, and then you get your K like this. And just trust me, this is correct, okay? Because, uh, um, and, and this conversion is ugly, very, very ugly. I just show you the code snippet here in the, in the unlikely event I get to talk much about performance that actually was a bad thing to put this into the loop explicitly. You, you wouldn't think, uh, you think that's a, a little bit of like integer arithmetic, it's not going to hurt the performance, but boy it does show you. Um, and again, the two across LCC. You can now just extend the, extend the dependencies across all three dimensions. The only thing you still need to do is hoist the index i out of these routines. But now you can, can do it as, again, nice, clean. I like it. I like it. Um, I, I, I think I still have a couple of minutes. I uh, can show a couple of performance slides. Um, let's not go into our evaluation environment. I just want to say we used uh, C on Broadwell and C on Phi um, with, these, um, with these flags and um, nothing really interesting to s uh, and I've used two, uh, I've used a whole bunch of um, performance tools, but the, 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 my, my favorites is the, the uh, a light way we have licensed software OPScope, for, for, which is really nice for just open MP, MPI very quickly, and then Paravel, I really like, you probably, some of you are familiar with Paravel, it's distributed by the Barcelona Supercomputer Center, and I like it very much. Uh, because you can generate nice timelines for it and you know, just provide, particularly if you, if you deal with a large number of threads and things, it's just nice to see these timelines. Uh, naming conventions, which I've tried to follow, and we've, uh, we, have, we have results, I mean, we have results for many, many things, but what we look at here is class A, which is really small, class C, which is just so a little bit bigger. Um, we can do much more. 
So okay, so so here is the ti uh, the performance rather in gigaflops for all of these six implementations um, in in beautiful colors um, and for for class C for the Broadwell uh, and for the Sion. I mean <laughs> for the Broadwell and for the KNL and okay so. And what we, and that's collected with GCC. And I come back to the Intel compiler. I, I have a slide comparing compilers because we have looked into that as well. And, and so then let me just show, show GCC. And that's actually, you saw that on the previous slide, it's the 7.1. GCC compiler because that that supports for Fortran for Fortran which the, our, our our codes are implemented in Fortran uh, and and that really supports this whole dual cross thing in Fortran and now look at and if you look at the performance well I mean you can't see that here because the Intel compiler is not next to it but we were very happy well particularly we, um, we, we are happy about when we saw that the manual as well as the DUAC performance for all three implementations is very com is, is, is very close so you don't lose, the, I mean you have, you have it's, it's less effort to implement it with dual cross, yet performance wise you are not taking any losses so far as, as, as we can see. So that's, um, yeah, that, that was good. And then actually for the hyperplane method we notice consistently, consistently that the dual cross version slightly outperforms the manual implementation. And we call that for hyperplane uh, dual cross, we use the static one. If you use the static one, it, it, it outperforms it. If you don't use the static one, then um, that's bad. Now, now I'm, um, it's not, it was not really the goal of this investigation here to compare the different methods per se. It's more an, a, a, a comparison, comparing dual cross versus manual. But just as a side note, another striking or, or one of the striking uh, observations we make here is that the, the three dimensional performs very, very poorly. And I can tell you three or, or, or two reasons for it. One, or, well, actually, so, so Henry thought one is the lack of vectorization because we can't vectorize this JACLD routine anymore because the index I is hoisted out. But um, <clears throat> the, the, the Intel compiler, so, so GCC actually doesn't vectorize any of those. Yeah, that it also doesn't vectorize the HP2 or the, the pipeline version, just doesn't vectorize it. The Intel compiler does, but as we'll see in a, in a later chart, it doesn't make all that much difference. Um, makes a little bit of difference, but not that much. And so that's, that's maybe a minor reason, the lack of vectorization. But what, what's really what was baffling was that this little index calculation, which is done on the fly in the inner loop in the HP3 method, you know, where you just convert the indices, boy, that really dragged the performance down. And not because the integer arithmetic takes so long, it's because it introduces a load imbalance. Because you, you can go back, I mean, you can do this after a presentation, but if you go back and look at the loop, how the stuff's calculated, it actually depends, so that, that introduces a big workload imbalance between the threads. And then you get this like imbalanced behavior. I mean, it's, um, yeah, so, so Henry already pulled that out and he has new results, but they were not ready in, in, in time. So he already improved that a lot. But then there is another bad thing about 3D. It's just you walk through the iteration space differently and you don't get the, um, um, then, then, then you have an issue with like cash, uh, you, you now walk in three dimension, so you basically have no cash reuse. 
none whatsoever and, and I think that's another big bummer compared to the, the other implementation but then that's not really my my focus, but you know, well, both are bad, right? The manual as well as the dual cross, and therefore, I don't care as long as the dual cross is good. Okay, just like one quick, um, uh, a few quick, I will, un unless there are some some other. Oh no, I'm already over my time, right? Oh, sorry, then. Uh, Oh, just just one quick thing. That's a nice. So so, so that's the, the OP scope profile that I took uh, for the for the class C, comparing the manual. That's the pipeline version to the manual um, to the dual cross pipeline version. OP scope can map the hardware counters, the collected hardware counters on a routine or, or basic block or or um, instruction level, and I'm just showing here. The, 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 the routine level and um, it also allows you to build partial sums so you can just click some of the routines and add them all up so I've built, it, I've built the partial sum here for the sync left and the sync right routine okay and I, I get this and then I built the partial sum here for the do across weight and the do across post and I tell you what, so, so in this case, I mean very similar, I have cases where they're like completely identical, I mean I've collected it many many times for many many different sizes, it's, it's same amount, you know, basically the same amount. I, I think that's nice, so, so it, 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 does the, it does a very similar thing. Um, and then I've also collected a parallel timeline which shows the, the executions of the loop bodies, lower and upper solver, and I clearly, you know, I traced, traced every other iteration to see little gaps and clearly detectable pipelines um, here. And, and, I, and I think I need to stop. Uh, uh, maybe I just want to say that for the for the higher two-dimensional hyperplane, we see um, I, I, I again added up this this, this uh, synchronization stuff, and um, if you if you look at how much time here is spent in the in the barrier rate, it's 6.67 for the for the manual implementation because we have this barrier at the end of the loop, right? Uh, versus the partial sums over the, the dual cross stuff plus the weight, then we are doing better with the dual cross stuff and the, um, we, the, the, the time for the barriers is reduced and the dual cross uh, post and weight doesn't add so much. Yeah. And, and I'm afraid I have to, to stop it here with like half of my slides. Yeah, so, uh, maybe I just um, then we looked into scheduling and, and this, this slide just shows you know how disastrous it is if you don't specify the schedule one how disastrous it is for the performance on the HP3 version because GCC seems to be she seems to get completely confused if the static if the if, if it's not a chunk size one and then, and then, and then, as soon as it gets one, pops up again, and um, and yeah, that's really just. And unfortunately, we didn't have the chance to do a good, a good Intel comparison because we were using compiler version 17, and that fell over its knickers in, uh, with the dual cross support. And we've reported the bug, and it's 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 fixed. It, we have been told it's fixed now, but I didn't have the. I just couldn't rerun the test before. I come so so and uh, but but I mean what this slide shows is that GCC is actually not that bad compared to Intel. No, they 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 are pretty similar. <laughs> so so and I'm I so so I can't wait to get to version 18 to investigate some other things and see. So yeah, sorry I have to I I obviously didn't <laughs> didn't didn't 
spend too much time in a day talking too much. Any any more questions? First, uh, the time. Okay, sir. Hi, so uh, is when, you, when you don't use static one, yeah. is it that it takes a long time for the other threads to get active with the source that they're assigned? Okay, here's, here's the timeline. Here's the power timeline for it. That's, uh, it's, it's now for class A on eight threads, okay, but it that basically shows uh, what, what, what I think what's going on um, is that, um, so this is what you get for static one. Um, it's, it's the running state for each thread and, and these little yellow flags that kind of indicate, you know, okay, the, here's a chunk, then another chunk's executed, but they're, they're, they're like events of when these, these loop bodies are executed. And so for static one, they're pretty nicely, um, it's pretty nicely distributed. They get, they get the same amount of work. Um, you know, approximately the same. While for, for just, if you just specify static, then each of them gets one chunk, but it, to me it looks like the, these chunks are not the same size. No, what happens is yeah? that, uh, the first thread, thread number one gets a chunk, yeah? and the other is being waiting for me. So is this blue, does this blue indicate? But the spinning is on the Ah, okay. Right, so everybody is waiting for this guy. And then one oh. is It's like having a big block here, yeah. and a big block here, and a big block here. Yeah, I, 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 I guess I wasn't really clear if this would be... I, I wasn't clear if... It doesn't distinguish because... Ah, okay. We enter, we enter in, the, in the work of the press and then find the spin. Okay. okay so this is the blue. And ah, the okay. The, 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 my spin, and then I, I execute after you group, and then I just uh, go to the, to the final, to the end of the region, and then I wait. So, but, but I mean, that wouldn't that mean that it's basically sequentially? I mean, one has to wait yeah, for the next, so, so you were right, yeah. It's a sequential execution on one block here, one block there, yeah. one block there, so I And, and that uh, it, 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 but, but it even happens, you know, so I've also experimenting with not just leave it the default, you know, and have each one. I also tried two and it's not much better. I mean I haven't taken a profile. I mean I I, I tried making in increasing them a little bit and, and also you know so yeah. you like uh, even more by the execution from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. Yeah. So n is the worst case that you have to N is the worst. But I mean, look, 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 if you look at this chart again, here's like 128 threads. So the, the, the class C benchmark is 162 by 162. So it's not that much bigger, okay? And then here, it, it, it's not that much bigger than 1. Yeah, even for, for some of them it's even one. And then look how this jumps up if, if I use 162 threads on KNL. So then, then I'm like all back to normal again. So it's just this chunk one. So, so I'm curious to see what the Intel compiler does. I, I, I don't know if this is like a GCC special or... Um, sorry. You can also hmm? You can also Intel. Yeah. Well, yep. Why don't you change? Why don't you do like? Yeah. Yeah. We'll do. Okay. I think we are running on our time. Yeah.